You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. So happy you could join me here today again on our part two of our Cabral House Calls. Always a lot of fun being able to tune into the community, see what everyone's asking in terms of questions, and it provides me with really tremendous feedback on what the majority of questions are around, what they're centered around, how I can try to do a better job explaining the answers that you're looking for and even try to provide more services, whatever they might be, easier way to get lab results, to get your Ayurvedic dosha, your body type, all of those things. So I love the feedback. I really do appreciate our community. If you're not a part of cabralsupportgroup.com, our free Facebook group, I can't implore you enough to join the group. It's such an amazing community, really great people. You're welcome to ask your questions there on a daily basis rather than me answer them maybe 10 or 12 weeks later on the Cabral host calls on the weekend. But either way, let my team know how we can help. I mean, that's the truth. If we can help you, we want to do that. That's our mission. That's our goal. And it's also what drives us in life. You know, different things drive different people. And tomorrow, you're going to hear a lot more about this on the Mindset of Motivation Monday podcast. Every one of my team knows, like they're all in alignment, that when we are living to our highest potential, We are reaching as many people as possible, answering as many questions as possible, and honestly, giving people an alternative. Like I don't love the word alternative medicine, but I get it. It's an alternative to the conventional mindset, which the media and everything portrays as the only answer, right? The only way that you can get well, which again, I don't believe anyone actually gets well when you go on medication or pharmaceutical-based drugs, but that's your answer, right? They're saying, okay, go to the doctor run blood work only as if like that's the only way to test the body. If there is a dis-ease state, well, we're going to put you on this pharmaceutical. We're going to put you on this medication. I don't even know that that's medicine. That to me shouldn't be called medicine because for the history of the world, that was never medicine. Medicine was always about balancing the body so that the body could heal. It was about giving it the foods and herbs and rest and water and all of those things in order for the body to then begin to heal itself. Like that's real naturopathy. That's real natural health. And they taught that throughout all of the ages. And that's why I've studied Hawaiian medicine, Egyptian medicine. I've studied Native American medicine. I've studied traditional Chinese medicine. I've studied Ayurvedic medicine and Ayurvedic take as well in Sri Lanka. And these are all amazing forms of medicine. I've studied bioregulatory medicine in depth. You have to understand that there is an alternative. Yes, these are alternative forms of medicine, but before 100 years ago or so, they were the form of medicine. What we practice now for medicine is really more pharmacology. And I don't mean that in a negative way either, because those pharmaceutical drugs, they save lives. They save lives. And I think that they are important, right? If you have a staph infection, antibiotics are a good thing. It's just antibiotics are not a good thing, in my opinion, if you have the sniffles or a cold or anything like that, right? We don't need to just throw antibiotics at people as if they do no harm in the body because they do. They do massive harm in the body. They create real gut dysbiosis. They can create immune imbalances and they can lead to even things such as heart attacks that no one ever talks about by taking an antibiotic. So these are real things. They're extremely important. And I just want you to know that you have options, that you have options. And I just implore you to explore all of those options. And then Choose the right one that you feel is the best fit for you. And sometimes it will be conventional medicine, but hopefully the majority of the time, at least in chronic-based issues, not acute-based issues, but in chronic-based issues, I do hope that you choose the natural health route. And acute-based conditions means that it's life-saving-based treatment. I have no wavering on that, that when it comes to life-saving-based treatment, you go to your emergency room and you get the best acute-based care possible. And that's just smart medicine. That's just smart. The goal with the Cabral concept is to bring you 
all forms of medicine and understand that there are truth in all of them. And it is only when ego gets in the way that we say one form has to be better than another. Okay, let's get into today's show. The first question is coming in from Carlos. Carlos says, I have H. pylori and I was wondering what are the doses on using the healthy belly? I've yet to buy. I want to know what dose first. Thank you guys. Keep up the great work. All right, Carlos, this is coming in on June 8th. I hope that you've gotten your answer since then. But with H. pylori, I answered this, I believe, last week on the Cabral Concept host calls. Of course, you wouldn't have known that because it just came out then. So I'm going to refer you back to that podcast. And you can simply just type in H. pylori at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, where all the podcasts are. And you'll see all 946 previous shows. Today is episode 947. All of today's questions and all of today's links will be located at stephencabral.com forward slash 947. Okay, so Carlos, you can tune back into that show and you can look at the citrocytal we use, the mastic gum, and the colloidal silver if you want to do the full protocol for H. pylori. And the healthy belly is part of the candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol that works along with it. But if you just work on an H. pylori, you would do a stool test to make sure it's gone. And you could just do the protocol I just spoke about. Simply takes four weeks to complete. All right, Heather's up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I was recently diagnosed through an ultrasound with a cyst in one of my breasts. I've not received any guidance on what can be done about this. Is this something that will always be there now? Or can I do something non-invasive to help it go away? Are there any supplements that could help? What are your recommendations dealing with something like this? I'm taking bioidentical hormone replacement. I've been prescribed the progesterone cream for several years and I've done great with that. Last year, a very small bi-est and testosterone was prescribed very briefly, used it, but started having a severe chin breakouts. I stayed in progesterone, but have been off the bi-est and testosterone for almost a year, 42 years young. Thank you so much for your help, Heather. All right, Heather, great question. Happy to help here. Talked about this topic a couple times, but since I don't know the exact podcast, I will give you an answer right now as well. For most women, I can never recommend, ever recommend estrogen or testosterone-based replacement. Almost never. The consequences could be too grave. That's the issue. Could I recommend them for a period of 12 to 16 weeks? Sure. Really never testosterone, but maybe to balance lower estrogen. However, if you saw my podcast two weeks ago on seed cycling, and the podcast was called The Four Foods That Balance Female Hormones, check that out again at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. You'll see what you can do to balance estrogen and progesterone levels. I don't necessarily have a major issue with using progesterone, but again, I don't like to use hormones in the long run. We will use some progesterone from natural-based items such as wild yams, but again, we typically only do that for 12 to 16 weeks. In terms of the cysts that we're talking about, again, so you want to run the thyroid adrenal hormone panel to find out why you might have a low estrogen or low progesterone or whatever in the first place. That's such an important lab to run. So Heather, I recommend the thyroid adrenal hormone panel without a doubt. Okay. In terms of the cysts, so it could be, obviously, I'm, I'm assuming that it's completely benign and that it's no issue at all and you don't have to worry about it, okay? But there are certain items, such as they're called proteolytic enzymes, they're higher in proteases, that can help to break up this tissue, these proteins. One of them is called natokinase, natokinase, okay? It's used for cardiovascular-based issues. It's used for deep vein thrombosis. It's used for blood clots, and it can be used for cysts as well. You take it away from males. Typically, first thing in the morning when you wake up, if you take a secondary dose, it would be before bed. Again, it has to be taken away from food or it can actually start to work as an enzyme for food. So I recommend that. Other items that can be quite helpful are cayenne or anything hot that will help with circulation and anything that helps with boosting the immune system in general. That's the place that I would start. There's more that you can do, but you also want to make sure that there's no leaky gut, intestinal permeability, gut-based issues as well. So that is the place that I would start. Okay. Mark's up next. Hi, I heard your podcast on alpha lipoic acid. I used to take acetyl L carnitine and ALA regularly, but recently saw it affects the conversion of T4 to T3, and I'm slightly low in thyroid hormone. Have you heard of this before? All right, Mark, this isn't necessarily common. I do know what you're talking about. It's just not that common. So if you feel that it is something that could hurt your conversion, well, of course, that I would stay off of it. I actually don't necessarily know that people need higher dosages of alpha lipoic acid. Now, alpha lipoic acid on a daily basis in a small form can be great, like no issue at all. And that's most likely not going to hurt any T4, T3 conversion. 
Same with acetyl-L carnitine. You could take that at a lower rate, typically used for energy, cognitive performance, all of those things. Alpha lipoic acid used as um, to help free radical damage, powerful antioxidant, works great for blood sugar regulation. So do keep in mind though, it's just simply not a supplement that you would need to use on its own at a higher dosage unless there was a call for it, unless there was a need for it. And even at that, if you felt like that was negatively affecting you, well, you don't have to use alpha lipoic acid in terms of blood sugar regulation or anything else. Like you could use banaba leaf, you could use chromium, you can use venetyl sulfate, you could use cinnamon. There's so many things that you could use for blood sugar. So Mark, when in doubt, you don't need to... Now again, at a small level, most likely these things are going to cause no issue. At a higher level, if you feel that you're susceptible to it, then simply don't take it. Like That's my recommendation that there's always another alternative, even an alternative medicine. And so that's what I would look at. So that is that. But typically, I'm going to be honest, if there's an issue of conversion from T4 to T3, again, run the thyroid adrenal hormone panel. And I would look into using something as such as daily thyroid support. And the reason is oftentimes the conversion can be a lack of total thyroid, meaning maybe there needs to be more iodine or even tyrosine, as well as selenium to help with that conversion. Daily thyroid support is an incredible supplement and it can help you with that. So again, um, you can just go to equilibriumnutrition.com and search daily thyroid support. We get remarkable results with that. And oftentimes for our private wellness clients, we'll use a thyroid glandular to help people get off thyroid-based medication if they choose to. But I would advise you to work with either my team or a local practitioner with that. Okay. Anonymous is up next. Hi, Dr. Ball. I was diagnosed with atypical depression, anxiety, ADD, ADHD at the age of 17. Heavy limbs, critically low dopamine production, extremely irritable, sensitive to outside noise sensation. I'm currently on a regimen of stimulants and anti-anxiety medication combined with supplements for energy. I know you don't believe in diagnosing disease or illness. In the past, have you worked with someone who was diagnosed with this condition? And if so, what were they lacking? In other words, how can I approach my condition the same way as functional medicine? Art Anonymous, No, it's not that I don't believe in disease. I believe in the symptoms you're experiencing. We work with thousands of people with depression and anxiety and ADD and ADHD, children and adults. So it's not that I don't believe the symptoms are there. They're just not a disease to be medicated like you're on right now or to be stimulated. You have to understand that the majority of these things come about because of absolute overwhelm on the autonomic nervous system. And so your body just can't keep up anymore, literally you've burned out. That is the best way to say it. So when a lot of people get the low dopamine, the chronic fatigue, they can't deal with outside noise and sensation, it's because they're literally burnt out. You ever heard the phrase, my nerves are shattered, my nerves are fried? You, you Literally, they are. You've been worn down. The sympathetic nervous system because of fight or flight, because of overstimulation of the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, has caused you potentially to slow thyroid. And again, I don't know why it keeps coming up today, but the thyroid adrenal hormone, as well as the hair tissue mineral analysis would be your place to start. It would show you, do you have very low levels of cortisol or maybe very high? Has it shut down your other levels of progesterone, DHEA, right? Any of those things. Or do you have an actual broken diurnal rhythm or tired and wired? And I talked about this in the rain barrel effect in my book, that you can have lower levels of energy in the morning than potentially higher at night, which also throws off your ability to rejuvenate. So my recommendation is this. Most likely, the stimulants, all of those things are helping you in the short term, but can be causing even more harm in the long term. I can't recommend enough to run the thyroid adrenal hormone as well as the hair tissue mineral analysis to begin looking for your answers. And if you have any digestive issues, you will absolutely want to run the organic acids test along with that. You can do it with your functional medicine doctor or with myself and my team, and we'd be happy to help you on this path as well. At age 17, you're way too young to be dealing with these things. I dealt with it myself at age 17. I know what you're going through, and the answer was not stimulants. I was given stimulants as well, okay? They made me feel better in the short term. They were going to cause more damage in the long term. I decided to go the natural health route, and I'm incredibly grateful that I did. Berenice is up next. Hi, I was wondering, what's the best way to utilize Dr. Ball's services in order to help with migraines relief and bloating? Which lab tests are recommended, and does the personalized wellness plan, and how does the personalized wellness plan work? Thank you. All right, Berenice, this came in on June 9th. Again, you can always 
email us at support at stephencabral.com if you'd like with these questions. Or better yet than doing that, you can also post it at cabralsupportgroup.com for just the community as well. But either way, we're happy to answer this question. So essentially what people do is there's two ways for me to review their labs and and help with their personalized wellness plan. One is they can go to equilibriumnutrition.com and they can choose any lab test that they would feel most appropriate for them. Bernice, in your example or your specific situation, if there's a lot of bloating going on, you would look at the organic acids test, the stool test, and the food sensitivity test. Those would be the three for digestive-based issues. And the same could be held true for migraines. One more I would add on, or two more, would be the omega-3 test for omega-6s to omega-3, since that can obviously cause tension, inflammation, and migraines as well. And the hair tissue mineral analysis for higher levels of heavy metals, copper toxicity, other things such as that. So really the only one I left out there was the thyroid adrenal hormone, right? So when in doubt, if people can run the Dr. Ball Big Five, that's the way that we can help people the most. But of course, you never have to run all of those labs if that doesn't work for you financially. What happens then is when you run the labs, all of those labs come back to us. My health coaching team, I have an amazing team, Laura and Caitlin and Julia, you'll be speaking with them if you run those labs. We review your labs together. We then come up with the most appropriate plan for you based on your bioindividuality and your current state. We work to help to replace your deficiencies and remove those toxicities so that you can begin to rebalance your body. We don't treat disease. What we look at is the underlying root causes holding people back from their greatest health and in your case, helping with migraines. So that's one option is to simply purchase the labs and then come with a complimentary consultation that then outlines your plan. If you would like an in-depth three consultations over a period of three to four months with a full wellness plan, lab recommendations, et cetera, you can actually apply to the private practice. I will link that up today at stephencabral.com forward slash 947. And that is where you will actually do an initial consultation for 60 minutes. We'll then make lab test recommendations based on your current state, where you're at. Once we get those labs back, we will do a second follow-up that will review all of your labs. Plus, it will be your complete personalized wellness plan. That's 60 minutes. And then we do a follow-up for 30 minutes, about four weeks after you start your plan to make adjustments as needed because we understand we're always going to tweak it to make it the very best for you. That is how we get people phenomenal results, even when they haven't gotten results in the past. So either one of those two options works great for most people. Hopefully that helps. All right. And this is something too that I'm going to be teaching with the certification of why I believe um, it just, you know, three appointments for health coaches and doctors to do with their patients and clients is, is really, um, I believe, the, the wave of the future. It's uh, the minimum and it helps people get well, you know, phenomenally well. All right, Rochelle's up next. Hi, Dr. Ball. I'm a certified health coach who embarked on my personal wellness journey about three years ago. I love your podcast for it enriches my knowledge and continues to open my eyes to how amazing our bodies are once given the proper tools to heal. I'm writing to inquire about spider vans. I'm 29. I recently noticed a couple small ones forming in the back of my legs. They seem to run in my mom's family. My mom is very slender and she has spider vans on her legs. She claims she got them when she was pregnant. I've not had any children, so I'm wondering what causes these veins to appear. I also believe my maternal grandfather had them on his legs as well. Can they be prevented or gotten rid of once they appear? I've read it's due to a lack of adequate protein, but I can't imagine that's the case for me as I'm very mindful about my eating. Thank you so much. You're very inspiring, and I hope to take your course this fall when you release it. Rochelle. Okay, Rochelle, let's get you your answer. And I'm excited about the path that you're on. It's amazing that you are a health coach helping other people. And I do look forward at the end of this month to hopefully welcoming you into our new practitioner certification. So excited about that. More information on that to come this week. So Rochelle, on the spider vans, this is fairly straightforward as to why people get them. There are multiple reasons why, okay? It possibly alcohol affects some women and men with spider veins, estrogen levels that have been elevated, a possibility as well. Certain medications can cause uh, spider veins as well as liver-based issues. Okay, those are all possibilities. However, the majority of the time I see spider veins caused is from poor circulation and backup of blood in the veins. And here's why. The veins are basically like a one-way street. Like it's supposed to be, there's basically this cutoff valve. There's a valve in the vein that just allows the, the blood to flow in one direction. 
But the problem is this. Oftentimes, circulation can become more poor. Why is it more common that women, when they become pregnant, oftentimes develop varicose veins or or spider veins or sprawling veins, whatever you want to call them? And the reason is that there is a little bit of backup in the blood flow in the legs, and that has to do with the pumping of the blood back uphill. So what have I seen work exceptionally well? I know it's only been on the same podcast, but I gave a recommendation a little bit earlier on terms of how to improve overall inflammation, how to dissolve any types of proteins, and how to, well, yeah, get that circulation going. So what I do with varicose veins and spider veins is I make sure that omega-3 levels are where they should be, so in terms of overall inflammation. Now, you can use something like our omega-3 support, whether it's the liquid or the capsules at two capsules a day or one teaspoon a day of the liquid, you can run an omega-3 test, of course. But what you can do is you can begin to use the natokinase that I spoke about before, two caps in the morning, two caps before bed. You're going to do this. Again, I can't give medical advice, but if it were me, then I would do this for about six to 12 weeks. By 12 weeks, you should start to see a marked difference for sure. I would do the natokinase. I would do cayenne pepper capsules basically a teaspoon or so per day. Sure, you could add a teaspoon to your meal, but that's quite a bit of cayenne pepper. There's two other great products, which are horse chestnut and butcher's room. Those are more for varicose veins that I've spoken about before, but not necessarily a bad thing in terms of trying those as well. And two more is I would use the daily fruit and vegetable blend or a very good quality highly alkaline greens, reds, rainbow type formula that would allow you more antioxidants from a natural-based perspective. Vitamin C is great too. The full spectrum vitamin C or even the alkalizing vitamin C would work. And the last thing you could do topically would actually be able to, some people get benefit from this, applying some hydrogen peroxide actually over the spider veins where they're forming, which would actually work internally as it goes through the skin as an anti-inflammatory, but it would work externally as well to lighten that. Not everyone wants to go that route. I don't necessarily recommend it, but it's an option that you're able to look into, and it's my job to bring you everything that works. So, Rochelle, hopefully that is the answer that you are looking for. All right, let's do one more question here today. Hi, Dr. Ball. Thank you so much for your tons of information and great info. You are a walking Britannica of natural health. I actually know what Britannica is, so that's great. Thank you. In one of your podcasts, somebody was asking for help with addiction. It was for smoking or alcohol, I don't remember. I have a suggestion for you. The Kudzo plant supplement and passion flower drops for addiction. You might know them both together. Work for on any addictions. Have a lovely day with lots of love, B. All right. Well, thank you for the recommendation for our podcast, Passion Flower. We use quite often. We think it's a great relaxant anti-anxiety, so I can see how that would work. For addictions, of course, that's in actually one of our deep sleep-based formulas, and it works great to calm the adrenals as well. The kudzu plant is not something that I actually use in my practice, so I'll have to check that out, B. Thank you for sending that over. All right, since I didn't get to answer a question, let me do the next one there, but thank you, B. Bridget's up next. Hi, Dr. Ball. Thank you so much for your incredible podcast and all the information you're putting out on our health and well-being. Almost two years ago, I was diagnosed with a real rare condition called mal d d Bark Mint Syndrome after returning from Australia, from New York. This condition is usually triggered by prolonged motion events, cruise, flight, long car ride, etc. It is known to be a neurological condition. Essentially, I always feel motion in my body like I never got off the flight. I struggle with balance issues, fatigue, rocking, swaying, and feeling though the ground is moving beneath my feet. And I'm too scared to get on a plane again. I experience this 24-7 even when lying down. I understand the flight was the trigger of this, but I need to get to the root cause of this debilitating condition. It has also worsened over the past two years, starting at, say, a 3 out of 10, now being a strong 10 out of 10. I've been eating strictly a plant-based diet the last nine months, whole foods, limited grains, gluten-free, soy-free, in hopes that it would start improving, but it's continued to worsen. I would love help in what you believe I should do. I should also mention I suffer from chronic sinus infections and polyps, hives, neurological symptoms, tingling, numbness, weakness, and bad menstrual cramps. I just generally haven't felt well for about five years. This condition is what I'd call the very worst of any health issues I've had. So sorry for the lengthy message, and thank you so much in advance for your response. It's much needed. All right, Bridget, 
absolutely fear f- feel for you, and I don't fear for you at all because I know that we can help you with this. So this is a vata-based condition. And you know I'm the biggest proponent of plant-based diets, a huge proponent. I believe that most people should be eating 70 to 80% plant-based. What does that mean? Well, predominantly vegetables and fruit, and then healthy plant-based fats such as avocado and olive oil, maybe some pumpkin seeds, things like that. Very little of the animal-based protein and items like that. However, I do want to say in your condition, in Ayurvedic medicine, we actually use more grounding foods and heavier foods. Now, you might go back to being completely meat-free, fish-free, um, or egg-free in the future, but you might actually begin progressively worse because you're following a vata exciting diet, which means it's actually going to trigger more vata. I want to give you a, my opinion on this and, and what I've seen in my practice as well. If you don't want to eat meat and fish, and again, I want people to do what they feel is right for them, what I would like you to do is start to use more oatmeal if it works well with you, more root vegetables, heavier root vegetables, parsnips, and even celery and beets and carrots and any heavier base vegetable, lots of yams and sweet potatoes, good healthy fats, olive oil, avocado, ghee, if you're able to do that. And I would really begin to look at what's going on in terms of your electrolytes as well. I can't recommend enough a hair tissue mineral analysis. I would also look into a adrenal hormone-based test and, of course, an organic acids test for what's going on in the gut. That is absolutely where I would go, I would look at, and we'd be happy, of course, to help you with that, but also you can look for a functional medicine practitioner in your area that can work on some grounding-based exercises as well. What I mean by that is resetting that autonomic nervous system resetting vagal nerve tone and that's going to work great with someone you know in your local area of course but what i believe is that you need to pacify this vata based state lots and lots of ginger i would most likely use ginger based capsules as well as drinking ginger tea and i would clear up your sinus based issues right away so for that i would go into using the nutribiotic nasal spray i would be using the neti pot I would use the throat spray by Nutribiotic as well. And I would most likely use their air drops to just get any fluid that might be in the ear, nose, throat out to get any infection that might be out as well. That could be causing some type of vestibular or some type of uh, motion-based issue. Because you're right, there's some root cause that was then triggered by the flight you were on. So you're absolutely right. That is what I would recommend. And I know that you'll be able to fix this. It's going to take a time. It's going to take some time. It's going to take a little bit of trial and error to figure out what's best for your body, but I have no doubt you're going to be able to fix this. So Bridget, hopefully that was the starting point that you needed to get started on getting back your health and certainly taking control of your health, your body, your mind. Thank you so much to everyone that tuned in today. Truly appreciate it as always. And stay tuned for what will hopefully be an amazing Mindset and Motivation Monday show tomorrow. Take care. Before you go, I wanted to share a personal story with you. The real reason I began to get well finally is because I figured out what was wrong with me. And that might seem pretty obvious, but I went from doctor to doctor for over two years before discovering at-home functional medicine lab testing. These are the labs that enabled me to finally figure out what was wrong with my hormones, blood sugar, electrolytes, and gut health. And once I knew what was wrong, I could then follow a proven plan in order to rebalance my body from the inside out. This is why I believe so strongly in functional medicine lab testing and why I've made it my mission to share these labs with the world. Now at equa.life, you can order an at-home lab test or a lab bundle for you and your family and be able to complete it within the week. Plus, the equal life difference is that you're not left to try to read and figure out these labs on your own. We explain what your lab numbers mean, what they mean in the much bigger picture, and then how to go about rebalancing your body in order to heal. To see our full selection of lab tests, or to set up a free lab selection call to find out what labs may be best for you, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. And do remember, we ship these all over the world. To find out more and to set up your free lab selection call, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. That's E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E 
forward slash labs.